Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to Cosmology Talks. This is another talk in the Camels series. This one's by Andrina Nicola, who is a postdoc at Princeton. As this is part of a series, there's no intro in this talk to Camels. If you want an intro, there should be one advertised on, on the screen right now, or if not, it'll be in the description. Andrina is talking today about using the electron density as a proxy for baryons, and then hopefully from that, using that to measure baryons, and the goal being a step towards observationally constraining baryons better. And then for me, at least, the hope from that would be that you would know the more fundamental stuff, the dark matter distribution better because you've removed the, the uncertainty. But it's also interesting just to measure baryons. And then, of course, because this is part of CAMELS, it's done using machine learning to better track where the electrons are. So enjoy. Welcome to Cosmology Talks, Andrina. Do you want to start by telling us briefly about your work? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. Um, today, I'd like to talk about a work that we have been working on in the last couple of uh, month. And in this work, what we wanted to do is we wanted to investigate the potential of the electron density power spectrum. So a tracer of the baryon distribution in the universe to actually jointly constrain cosmology and astrophysics, such as basically baryonic effects on the matter distribution. Now, the electron density power spectrum by itself is not directly observable, but it basically underlies observations of things such as the kinematic sunyayo seldovich effect or fast radio bursts. Cool. So yeah, in, in a little bit more detail, what questions were you trying to answer? Why is each question important to solve and what do we gain by solving them? So currently, I think we're in the fantastic situation in cosmology that we have a lot of surveys that are upcoming that are going to give us a lot of data at a precision that we really haven't seen so far. And these surveys are going to give us the opportunity to basically probe cosmic fields down to very small scales. And these small scales actually carry a wealth of information. And one cosmological probe that's very suitable for actually capturing this information is weak gravitational lensing and its power spectrum. Now, it has been realized actually a couple of years ago only that um, the matter power spectrum, which is actually the thing which is measured with weak gravitational lensing, as weak gravitational lensing is basically sensitive to all the gravitationally interacting matter in the universe, so both the luminous and the dark matter. So it has been found that this matter distribution is actually affected by the effects of baryons due to, for example, um, AGN or supernova feedback. And we currently actually lack full knowledge of the magnitude of these effects. And in order to obtain um, theoretical predictions for these scales, what we usually do is we run hydrodynamical simulations and we then measure the power spectra in these simulations to basically model these effects in our theoretical prediction. And now the problem that we are facing at the moment is that different hydrodynamical simulations make actually significantly different predictions based on very subtle um, settings, such as, for example, their subgrid modeling choices. And therefore, if we really want to be able to benefit from this fantastic data that we're going to see, we really have to be able to um, learn about the baryon distribution in the universe. And this is what we want Wanted to do basically in our work. Do you want to get into the details now? Okay, great. So in the next couple of minutes, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the work that we've been doing um, together with the people that you can see here on the bottom of the slide. And we also had a lot of help from other members of the CAMELS team. So as as we've already seen before, in order to be able to optimally benefit from the fantastic data that we're going to see in the very near future, we really need to be able to learn more about the baryonic distribution in the universe. And we can observe the baryons in the universe um, using several different observables, such as, for example, their X-ray emission. And we can also use the CMB as a backlight and basically detect baryons through the zunyayev zeldovich effect. And finally, there's a kind of like novel probe of the baryon distribution that has been recently emerging, which is fast radio bursts. Now, in our work, 
we've chosen to not really focus on one of these observables in particular, but to actually take a step back and to focus on a theoretical quantity that underlies some of these observables of the baryon distribution. And we've chosen to work with the electron density power spectrum, PEE. And the basic question that we wanted to ask is, how well can we actually constrain both cosmology and baryonic feedback from this electron power spectrum? And these results can be interesting because they can then be basically folded basically into these different observables that you can see here and can then tell us how well we can actually do by doing all of these observables. And as you can imagine, since we're talking about camels here, in order to basically try to answer this question, we've worked with the camel suite of simulation, which is this exciting suite of small volumes of hydrodynamical simulation that has been run by Paco. And CAMELS has been run for two different subgrid physics modeling, Illustris TNG and SIMBA. And here on this slide, you can basically see the electron distribution for exactly the same cosmological parameters for Illustris on the left and for SIMBA on the right. And you can already see here that the electron distribution in SIMBA is actually significantly more diffuse than it is for Illustris TNG. And this is due to the different physical modeling of baryons and that is basically being done in these two simulations and so i guess it's obviously also same cosmology but also same precise initial conditions exactly exactly and you can see it actually because the blobs are more or less at the same place and so what we are interested in, right, what we said is like the electron power spectrum. And these differences between illustrious TNG and SIMBA actually lead to very significant differences in this electron power spectrum as well. And this is shown here on this slide. So both of the plots here show the electron power spectrum PEE as a function of wave vector K. And for both of the simulations, these power spectra are actually shown as a function of the astrophysical parameter in camels that they're most sensitive to. So in camels, baryonic feedback and baryonic effects such as supernova and AGN feedback are parametrized using four different parameters. And the plots here basically pick the one parameter that each of the two simulations are most sensitive to. And focusing first on the plot on the left hand side, you can see that illustrious TNG is actually most sensitive to the amount of energy in supernova feedback. Whereas for SIMBA, on the other hand, we find the electron density power spectrum to, to be most sensitive to the wind speed in supernova feedback. And this is really surprising because this mean, means that these differences between illustrious TNG and SIMBA actually lead to these power spectra or to the changes in these power spectra being primarily driven by distinct physical effects. This brings me exactly to the to the next to the next problem and to the first actually um, task that we faced when we were um, doing this work, which is that because these subgrid models are so different, the first step in our analysis is really to try to identify parameters that are observable and that allow us to quantify baryonic effects independent of the given implementation in the simulation. And one quantity that appears to be very promising to do that is the baryon fraction in halos. And this has been found in particular in the analysis by Van Dalen in 2020. And so the first step in our analysis has basically been to check if this is also the case for camels and if we can actually use the baryon fraction to predict the effects of baryons on our electron density power spectra. And to this end, we trained the neural net to basically predict the power spectra based on cosmological parameters and only f-bar instead of looking at all of these ASN1, ASN2 parameters. And the results are shown here on this slide and it's best to focus on the right-hand panel where the solid lines basically show the measurements from the simulations and the dashed lines actually show the predictions from our neural net. And what we find is that even though f-bar doesn't allow allow us to capture the full information and the full response of these power spectra to baryonic feedback, it actually does a pretty decent job. 
And this is kind of nice because this gives us a parameter that is sort of simulation independent and that we can then use to constrain baryonic feedback in these simulations. And once we have that, we can actually go to the main goal of our analysis, which has been to try to investigate how well we can constrain cosmology and baryonic feedback using the electron density power spectrum. And to this end, we do basically exactly the opposite of what we've done before. And we train a neural network to basically predict cosmological parameters and F bar from the electron density power spectra. And this is a very simplified way of trying to forecast constraints from a given observable, but we, we sort of see it as a substitute for a Fisher matrix analysis. And the results on basically training this neural net on illustrious TNG electron density power spectra at redshift of zero are shown here on this slide. And these plots here basically show the comparison between the input and output of both omega m and f bar. And analyzing these plots, what we find is that we can actually obtain relative constraints of approximately 7% on omega m and approximately 15% on f bar. Now, given the fact that we're only looking at a very small volume in our CAMEL simulation, this appears to be rather promising. But this actually immediately brings on a follow-up question, because these uncertainties that we have here are only the statistical uncertainties in our analysis, right? And now the immediate question that we need to ask is, well, but what are actually the systematic uncertainties tied to this type of analysis? And in order to basically address this question, we follow an empirical approach. So we've seen before that in CAMELS, we have two different simulation suites, Illustris and Simba. And these two have been run using these different feedback models. So the constraints that we've seen so far have been determined using only Illustris TNG. So this means that if we assume that the differences between Simba and Illustris TNG are a measure for our uncertainty on subgrid modeling, this means that we can actually use these two simulations to test the robustness of our constraints. And the basic idea is that we can use our illustrious TNG trained neural network and basically use it to predict cosmology and baryonic feedback also on Simba. And the idea is that if we basically manage to predict both omega m and f bar also on Simba using our illustrious TNG trained model, then this means that our constraints seem to be robust to changes in this subgrid modeling. And if, on the other hand, we detect biases, these provide us with a measure for the systematic uncertainties that are inherent in our analysis. And so the results of this test are shown here on this slide, where you can see basically, again, a comparison between the input and output omega m and f bar for evaluating the illustrious TNG trained neural net on Simba. And as you can see, actually, the network does a pretty decent job at also recovering f bar and omega m on Simba, which means that at least in volumes as probed by CAMELS, it appears that the electron density power spectrum seems to be a promising probe that allows us to jointly constrain cosmology and baryonic feedback, and is on top of that also robust to changes in subgrid modeling as spanned by Simba and Illustrious TNG. I, th I think I have two quick questions. One is, I, I think, I'm noticing a common theme between a lot of the speakers, which is showing that some tool trained on illustrious TNG works on Simba. And obviously that is an important step and it's great when you get results like the one you've got. But I guess then there's like a next point of implicit assumption, which is that somehow the real world will not be more different from illustrious and Simba than they are from each other. Is that something that it is fair to believe that somehow either illustrious or Simba or somewhere in between them is what the universe looks like? Or, or is that something that now needs to kind of be tested in some way? I would definitely say that the latter, yes. So I think this is like the largest sample of hydrodynamical simulation with the most different feedback models that we have so far. So it's sort of like the first step in doing that. If we wouldn't be even passing that test, that would be even more of a problem. But I think 
the fact if like the truth stays like lies somewhere in between and how things look if we look at a third and um, completely different hydrodynamical simulation i think this is all things that need to be more rigorously tested and this actually already brings me to like basically the summary of what i um, wanted to say today so like we really like I think we've seen that uncertainties on the magnitude of baryonic feedback on the matter power spectrum really limit current and future weak lensing surveys. And in order to make progress, I think we really need to get better constraints on the baryon distribution. And in our work, we've looked at the electron density power spectrum, and we found that it allows us to actually reasonably tightly predict both omega m and the baryon fraction. And these constraints seem to be largely robust to differences in subgrid physics as basically spanned by Lustris TNG and Simba, at least for the volumes that we're looking at here with camels. And this leads us to the conclusion that the electron density power spectrum seems to be a really promising way to um, jointly constrain cosmology and baryonic physics while being robust to these systematic uncertainties. And I'd like to close with saying that our analysis is definitely subject to several caveats. So I think it's been highly simplified and definitely idealized. As we've already seen, the electron density power spectrum is itself not directly observable, so it remains to be seen how well our results actually translate to real-world observables. And I would also like to stress that we've quantified the robustness of our analysis to basically systematics in hydrodynamical simulations and associated predictions, but we haven't looked at other small-scale observational systematics. And finally, um, we faced several challenges in this analysis. I think the biggest one has definitely been the stochasticity in camels due to the small volume. And I would also like to point out that like this recovery of like when translating our results from Illustris to Simba has actually only been possible for a subset of the power spectra that we've considered. Okay, cool. Yeah, it seems like another common theme that the sample variance in camels has been annoying. Or, I mean, it, you have to start somewhere. So I guess it's good that um, that there are 25 megaparsec size boxes rather than no boxes. I think so. We're too spoiled <laughs> if we, if we kind of like complain about that. Cool. So then the very last question, what still keeps you up at night about this research and what would you like to discuss about it with other experts? The main things that really keep me up at night are a little bit related to um, the caveats that I've mentioned just before. So I think, first of all, um, we've seen before that basically the electron density power spectrum actually performs very well and it's kind of like robust to moving from Illustris to Simba. Now, this is not the case for other observables where you naively would expect it should be. This might be due to the fact because these, you know, like take constraints on baryonic feedback from different scales than does the electron density power spectrum. But to be really honest, I don't think we've fully gotten to the bottom of why this is. So this is definitely something that keeps me up at night. And I really wonder and, and hope we'll be able to answer at some point, maybe um, actually with larger volume simulations. And I think the second one is really tied to the stochasticity that we have here. So we know that our results are affected by stochasticity. So I really, really want to see how much of this is going to be the same if we look at larger volume simulations where stochasticity is less of a problem. So I think these are the, let's say, to the, the biggest things that keep me up at night regarding this. Awesome. Well, thank you for the, the great work and great talk, Andrina. Thank you so much, Sean. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. There, there will be a live discussion of this and all the other Camels talks in this series with the speakers and some other invited experts sometime in February or March. If you're interested in attending them, then please get in touch and I can put you on a mailing list to let you know about it. If you want to watch some more Camels talks, as this is part of a series, there's a playlist in the description or the next video in the playlist should be on the screen being advertised now. Or soon. Alternatively, you could watch Tillman Trist's talk, which was an observational version of Andrina's talk. Maybe think of Tillman's work as implementing a less advanced but well understood tool, and Andrina's work is designing the next generation of, of that same tool. In the meantime, if you like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to let YouTube know that you want them to share more similar stuff with you in the future. And 
Have a great day.